Turn up the volume, it's the 18 Friday. Jeremiah's shame at the party started, no delay. We hit the dance floor, groove to the beat. Everybody catching vibes, moving their feet. Team Friday, taking over the town. Turn up, make your speakers pound your hands up. Let's make some noise. Hey, Team Friday, we're taking uh. over the town. Turn it up. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to 18 Fridays. Sassy yes, for 10 Team Meaningful Fridays. We're coming to you live and direct from our world headquarters here in the Rock. That's ROC. We don't stop. We got a doozy for you today. We're unpacking. We're unpacking. And we have with us a special guest who you all know, Carrie Jo Little. Let's give her a round of applause, please. Let's see. Which applause? Oh, no, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Here's the excited applause for Carrie Jo. Oh, you got the you got the French press. Ah, oh, that is that is. The, I think that's some of the best quality coffee you could have right there. It is the best. Oh no, I can't hear you now. We're gonna play a game where we pretend what we know what Carrie's saying. Oh, you muted yourself says you've muted yourself so you just have to unmute yourself let's see in the gears on, on the right hand it says guest has muted themselves try resetting then all right well carrie's going to be right back as soon as she refreshes and we're, we're unpacking the settlement and we want to start with uh we are not attorneys there we go i'm sure it's going to work now I'm back. See. Boom. See, sometimes we just need a refresher. <laughs> Stay calm, everybody. Uh, but we are we are unpacking today the NAR settlement, what it means to you in real estate. Uh, let's start with we're not attorneys, nor will we play one on a live stream today. Uh, what we want to do is give you tools, tricks, apps, strategies to see the opportunity and change because there's always opportunity. So Carrie, yeah, and encourage you to work with your brokerages. Yeah, talk to your broker owner. That's the person that's there to give you guidance. Uh, we're here just to help you be better agents. You know, change is always going to happen in real estate. That's what we do know for sure. And it's when there's change, there's opportunity, right? There's agents that are like, "Oh my gosh, this guy is falling," or there's like, "Okay, all right, I see it coming. Let's get better." The sky is falling though. For some, <laughs> for some, yeah, for some, it's okay. Now's a great time for you to go do something else that you always dreamed of doing. You know, Walmart always needs door greeters, or that is wrong. I mean, that's wrong. It's not for everybody. Some people they did it because look, it's been easy for them. They've been order takers and they've been writing offers, and it's just like, oh, this real estate's real easy. Now we're going to have to define our value and we're going to have to, you know, be able to articulate what we do for our clients, which the good which you should have been doing anyway. Like right. the, what the challenge is, is when, cause I, you know, I created a few short reels about this and um, some that are a little bit longer on TikTok. And what I'm finding is, is agents are like, but I just don't understand. And the challenge with not understanding is, is you just weren't explaining your value, how you got paid, how compensation can work, that you can negotiate anything if you are a buyer, seller, tenant, landlord, etc. We just yeah. didn't do a good job. And I'm I'm here to say, J Man, we should just own it. And let me give you here's here's the story. So yeah. you know we're right, right now we're in Kissimmee. And you know, my husband talks to everyone. He already knows all the neighbors. And so the neighbor came over yesterday and he was showing him around the house because he remembers the house before we f updated it because Mark has updated almost everything. And he said, um, Carrie, can you explain to the neighbor the change with um, the National Association and the lawsuit? I was like, oh, send me up. <laughs> we had this conversation. It's like, here's my official spokesperson. I'm telling you, I am the, the I'm the closer. So, I mean, so he sat down and we had a conversation and I'm, I'm going to say this is from the neighbor. Like he said, Carrie, I would, I would go to list my properties because he has a few. So we got a lot of information. And he said, 
the every agent had the same rate and i was like tell me more and i'm just going to say it's the same rate that the news has been talking about and and i said okay we should just own this because this is why you know our news outlets i almost said them are saying that there was a, a standard compensation commission and i was like no there wasn't and i rarely even got that right. um but clearly that's what the consumer thought and so he said carrie i would just talk to a bunch of real estate agents until they gave me the percent that I wanted. And I said, okay. And he told me the company and I wanted to know if it was a boutique brokerage and it was a boutique brokerage that had a little more flexibility. And again, I don't know everybody's model, but I remember the model that I had when I worked for a bigger box and they had an amount that they wanted. And that's what we went in to get. So when the, when the neighbor was like, he thought that there was a standard, but he also knows how to negotiate. Right. And there are some people that just, they take it for face value and we just need to own the fact that we sucked at explaining compensation. <laughs> exactly right. Well, and I think now, now's the time. And, and I think that's one of the things that we really should be doing because we want to give them all the things they should be doing. But I think one, it, we're going to give you a link by the end of this so you can get all the show notes and everything that we're going to be talking about today. But it's a 108 page settlement agreement, which still needs to be, the judge still needs to sign off. DOJ needs to sign off on it. So it's just proposed at this time, but it makes sense for you to go through it with your broker. And if you need clarification, ask them, and I'm sure they'll have an attorney present with that. But also I think it makes sense to like do a Google search about it and see all of the news articles and stories that come up because that's exactly what the consumer's doing. That's exactly what my, my dad got an email on his Yahoo account. I'm sitting in, at dinner with him at his house and he's like, talk to me about this. And, and it's, it's the same article like you're saying, talking about a percentage and how that's cut and this is that. So I think it's know the facts, but then also know the perception of the consumer because what they're reading, if we don't have anything else to say about it, is the truth, right? Because we, I, I mean, I'm the person that still gets up and watches the news and I get the pop up from the Wall Street Journal, New York Times. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if this is, if we're not the ones explaining the narrative, they're going to, they're going to go with what's on the news. And I'm, I'm going to tell you the, the news outlet that I watch pretty consistently Monday through Friday is next week. They're going to talk about home ownership. I'm like, I'm all in. I'm going to watch it. Then I'm going to go create a reel to explain yeah. the realities of my market because they speak from the, the national perspective and averages. And this is why you need tools like RPR. So you can go see what the median household income is, the income per capita, you know, what the values are, because in, in our case, we're letting the news tell all of, all of our clients what's reality. And if you don't think your clients know about this, they actually know, because there are some people that are still under a rock that have no clue, but there are some people that are texting and asking questions and because I was having a conversation with someone else, they're now saying that, OK, because because for those of you that really don't know, like the, the facts, like they're, you know, they're, the, the, the settlement is, is going, one of the rules is new MLS rule proposed. A new rule will prohibit the uh, communication of broker compensation offers via the multiple listing service, encouraging off MLS negotiation consultations. And so we're having conversations with our clients. And um, I had another agent that was saying, yeah, my my seller does not want to pay um, a compensation where we're going to participate with the brokerage that brings in the buyer. And I'm like, well, that's OK. It's OK. However, this is where agents need to sit with their brokerages or their right. teams and come up with a list of the if this, then that. Because even if because if I go in to show your property and what if the, the results of the um, of the settlement are we have underserved communities. We'll talk about veterans in a second where people cannot afford to pay my compensation, right. but the reality is they can afford to mortgage it. Right. Because it was going into the mortgage anyway. Right. They just can't come up, walk, come to closing with the additional funds they are paying closing costs. They're paying, um, <clears throat> they're bringing in their down payment. And if you're someone that's only putting down, let's say 3% plus closing costs, which could be six grand, depending on which state you're in, um, that's all they've got. That's all they've got. And so we have to come up when I say we, I mean, 
we with our brokerages, what is the yeah. strategy and how do you handle it when someone writes an offer and then they have to call you to renegotiate and the seller's like, well, I still don't want to pay it. What's going to happen with that buyer? Are you going to work pro bono? Are you going, what, what's going to happen? Is there, are we going, is there going to be a new grant pool of money, J-Man? Like, I'm like, yeah. everyone has to come back to this, to the table and have a conversation. Well, yeah. Let's, let's unpack that right there. I, I think, you know, s sitting down with your, with your broker and having a meeting and saying, Hey, let's brainstorm all the different ways that we're going to, all the different scenarios in which this is going to come up. I'm working with a the buyer, they can afford it. I'm working with a buyer, maybe they can afford some of it. I'm working with a buyer and I'm getting fully compensated. I'm working with a buyer, I'm not. I'm getting half compensated. Of, or whatever of, half of half of half is. Right, whatever whatever that is. And so like, let's talk about it and let's see what the what the strategies are. Because you're right. I mean, if, if you're working with somebody, there's only a certain amount of uh, concessions or credits that are allowed depending on on the financing. And if, if they're, you know, you got an FHA buyer with 6% concessions, they're, they're, there's, there's not going to be anything else that could be credited, you know, regardless of the state. And I think that's something that I've read a couple articles that the mortgage industry is kind of working on to try to increase the allowable closing costs and prepaids, but that's not going to happen immediately. That's going to take a while. It's not. And, 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 you know, the other part of that is, when you go and you have your full presentation with, with the seller and your buyer, let's go with the seller. And you sit down and the seller says, this is where, this is what I'm willing to spend. And then you say, okay, this is what you're willing to This is what you're willing to spend to, um, and here's all of my value. And then a part of that conversation is own the fact that this is this lawsuit there, there's, there's a settlement, a proposed settlement and explain what's been happening. Some of some agents just need to go back and look at history because right. in Illinois, we used to have sub agency and the buyer and the, the buyer's agent and the listing agent worked on behalf of the seller, even if you were showing properties to a buyer. So the realities of what happened before, why um, our laws always change. And even this NAR settlement, if you read it, there's a, there's a sunset. Like there's so many things we have to explain to our sellers and say, I own the fact that we didn't do a good job, but let's just talk about how I'm going to market your home and how, you know, it is my recommendation that we do this. Cause there are agents that, you know, that you could have always negotiated your compensation. And if you ever, if any of you have ever sold a HUD home, <laughs> yep. you, you, first of all, you should just go. Yeah. Cause HUD, HUD, the buyer's agent negotiated their compensation with HUD. And well, that, we that was actually There's somebody who's never even written that offer and they don't even know how to, what I'm talking about that. Yeah. When they were more readily available, let's say like when I first started yeah. and, and it was like, if you got your, your offer accepted, you had to overnight the paperwork. It had to be there within 48 hours. It had to be with blue ink. Like there was, it was very specific and they actually at the, in, in our market would pay more than what the average might be because they realized I mean, buyers, agents need to know what they're doing because if not, it gets kicked back and the, the buyer wouldn't have a house. It would go right back on the market. They did not care. Well, and, and if you look, because now it's all in, you know, electronic format, they, yeah. the HUD, because I went, I did so much research when I got licensed because no one would help me with HUD that I literally called them. I asked for my own key. I yeah. read like crazy. And they said, Same. if you, I mean, they, they had all these different terms of AE or like if it was approved to be owner occupied. And then they said, they look at the bottom line. HUD looks at the bottom line. So you had to explain to your buyer, when we go to write an offer, I'm getting paid on this deal and this is my rate. So when my rate is taken out, this is what HUD is looking at. So you would write the offer based on the fact that your buyer wanted to win that offer. Yeah, because right on the offer was the net. It was like price, less, 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 less what our compensation, net to, net to HUD, net to HUD. So what else could agents be doing right now? So we have the, if this, then that, uh, I put in the comments for all of you as a resource, I created a GPT, uh, it's exclusive buyer's agent expert GPT. It's been trained on, it's been trained on everything. It knows about the lawsuits before I updated 108 page settlement. It's updated in there. I need you to send me that link, J man. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to send it to you. Um, I'll send it to you. Well, we can demonstrate it too. 
But it it's not just trained in that. It knows antitrust. It knows the code of ethics. It has every profile of home buyers and sellers that NAR has done recently. The generational. Uh, it knows NLP, neuro linguistic programming. It knows objection handling. So you could quite honestly go. I'm working with a buyer and they don't want to sign my exclusive. What should I say? Or I think what everybody's going to go through right now is I have been working with a buyer that I never had a conversation about exclusive or ex exclusivity because I was just like, they're really nice and I'm really nice and I don't want to have a conversation where they might say no. And what should I say now? And it'll give you, it's, it's really good. I found it. Don't worry, Jamin. I found it. It just took me a second to. I you got it in the comments. Now I'm debating on if I need to print this or just put it in Evernote so I can highlight it. Okay. <laughs> okay, but you made a good point. Like, first of all, you just built your own GPT. I have a GPT for um, new real estate agents, but then maybe I need to, to, to put in a section so they can actually deal with the objection handling. I like that. Yeah, you're going to have to show us that one. Yeah, I'll show it. There well, must be and, a and, just again, like we're both really great at AI. We should put on an AI summit, I think. Hey, if you're watching this, you'd like to see an AI summit with Carrie Joe and J-Man, let us know in the comments. We'll, and so a couple other people that, to be named later. But I think this could also be a great resource if you're, if you're a broker owner, right? You could have your very own GPT that's not public, right? That you train it on everything. Here's, here's our, our SOP. Here's how we do list here. Just upload all the knowledge that you have and now your agents when they can't reach you they just ask the gpt that you created and literally because because this is whenever i train new agents i'm like listen eight o'clock at night you need to write a contract you've never learned you never came and watched the videos and you want to call your managing broker or broker or train the office trainer at eight o'clock at night on a saturday they're at some comedy show they can't right. answer your call right you could go right to your to the office gpt Brilliant. So nice. And and you could have resources built into there. You could have all it just I almost do you remember Little Shop of Horrors? I'm dating myself a little bit, but little way back in the day with little. the plant and he was like, feed me, Seymour. That's what I feel like GPT is like it will gobble up all the knowledge that you can give it and say, What else? Is there anything else? It ate a hundred and eight page settlement and was like, Got any questions? I was like, Where in the settlement does it say this? <laughs> Section this, do do do. I'm like Wow. What, what should then, I be doing? That is like, and then you, then you become, you're, you're the fact, you you got the facts. You're not worried. You're cause your clients are going to call you anyway and say, let me tell you what the news just said. And you can say, you know what? I'm glad you asked that. Or the agents will say, I'm glad you asked that. They can just open up their, their mobile device, go to the GPT, ask the question and say, this is what it really means. Let's do that. I'm over here like, okay, are we done? So I can go play with this. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see which, uh, here we go. Got Carrie in the corner. Okay. Perfect. We're kitty corner from each other. So here it is. Let's say, give me, give me like a question. What do you want me to ask it? I'm working with um, a buyer and at what I'm working, I'm working with a buyer and the buyer doesn't understand exclusive agency. What's a great response. Maybe I don't, you know, or how do I help my buyer understand how I get paid? Okay, I'm working with a buyer. How about I have been working with a buyer? There you go. I have been, and again, if you're watching, just put whatever you want in the comments. This is not pre-planned. We can just ask it, whatever. Uh, I have been working with a buyer and have never signed an exclusive or had the talk, <laughs> the talk like parents talking to their kids, or had the talk about it. Because every parent has a talk. <laughs> right. right. What, this is just a different talk. Right. What should I say now to bring up signing the exclusive? Okay. Ready? I ask a question. Boop. Tell me, oh expert, oh tell me what to do. Yeah, 
Yes. So I'll, I'll narrate it. When discussing the introduction, this is essential. Hold on, it's going so fast. We'll scroll up. When discussing the introduction of EBA with a buyer who we've already been working with but haven't broached the subject, it's essential to approach the conversation with a mix of honesty, transparency, and value proposition. Here's a structured way to navigate the conversation using neuro-linguistic programming techniques to ensure a positive client-centered dialogue. Before the conversation, prepare. Open in the conversation, rapport building. Start with rapport building to create a comfortable, like using mirroring and matching techniques for NLP to establish a connection. For example, if your buyer is more laid back and speaks softly, mirror their style and approach. Introducing the topic, reframing, highlighting benefits, anchoring and feature pacing, addressing concerns, using the meta model, and then closing with an invitation, softeners and, and presuppositions, and then follow up. You can't and like you could just even say, say this, give right, re update this down to a fifth grade level. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Re rewrite. There you go. This. So a fifth grader can understand in bullet points. <laughs> well, it'll, it'll auto read. Yeah. It'll do it in markdown format. It's my instructions. Oh, okay. Let's see. Before the talk, starting the conversation, making friends. <laughs> oh, this is so good. <clears throat> can we ask it for role play scenarios so we can practice with each other? Yeah, Jody, that's a good one. And actually, while that cooks, it's like I could predict the future because, oh my gosh. Jeremiah has role play scenarios already on a Google Doc for all of you. And again, if you at the end, if you, I'll give you the link. I'll give you all these notes. But I went in there and I said, "Give me," you know. It started out with with the initial lawsuit because I was like, "Okay, let me. How can I explain this? Con uh, com commission transparency with a seller, buyer's concerns about age of representation, seller negotiating commission rates." buyer asking about commission rebates, explaining dual agency. And then I, I had a section on what, what did I say here? Um, how to explain things in a better way, meaning like not motivating agents based on compensation, which some people have said historically, we're motivating buyers now. And it, right in a, in a different way there. Right. So 20 scenarios presented in a what not to say better way to say it format. And then I did 60 different objections and, and how to overcome them. You know, why should I pay a commission to a buyer's agent? All that. And, you know, and, and what's interesting is when I, I, I probably need to help give you a few more of those objections because in, yeah. well, in, cause in, in Florida, we don't even have, we, you dual agency is illegal. Yeah, you have transactional brokerage. But it's transactional, but you can still do exclusive buyer agency. We you, you know, when you list it's exclusive, but the but the process is different and most agents were transactional. So what is that gonna look like? Is it gonna be um a no agency relationship? Is it gonna be that I don't exclusively represent you, but here's my offer of compensation? Like there's so many uh, different scenarios that could come out of this depending on what state you're in and the and the license law in your state. Yeah, my wife just put in the comments. Uh, I used to be my husband's best friend until Chat GPT. <laughs> You're still my best friend, boo. Okay, Chatty G is a close second. Chatty G is a close I'm second. I'm so glad Mark is not on here. <laughs> uh, but you, you can. I, I think it is important to uh, Jody's point. You can ask it for scenarios. Okay, give me, give me scenarios scenarios to role play this to I can type very well role play this and anything else I always like to give it open-ended things because it thinks better than I do always give me scenarios to role play this and anything else you think might come up in a conversation with a buyer. I mean, I think you might have a buyer that says, don't show me any properties where they're not going to pay compensation. 
Yeah, wow. and, and that's so that's exactly what I was referring to, like motivating buyers. If if we're transparent and they they will know what the compensation is depending where it's posted and how it's posted, because it could be through a broker's website, it could be a number of different ways. And they go, well, Carrie, here's five properties I was interested in. Three of the five are, are willing to pay the compensation that I'm obligated to because I signed an agreement with you. And the other two aren't. So let's start with the three so I don't have to come out of pocket. And then if we don't like those, we'll go to the other. So now you're motivating the buyer to notify their agent. Not, you know, as, as agents, we can't be motivated by the compensation. That's a violation of the code of ethics. Very clear. You can't say, I'm not going to show it. You want to make a living and you explain how you get paid. But yeah. at the end of the day, you're because our license law says that it protects the consumer. But you still, we, we need to make a living. So you have options. If, if you're motivated by money, just go start building your own properties, start buying your own stuff, start, start renovating and become a landlord. Yeah, there's so many ways to real estate related. So it's look at, it. here's the scenario one, the enthusiastic first time home buyer. Scenario two, the cautious buyer. You're welcome, folks. Look at this GPT is available to you for free 99 free. Okay. I don't charge you anything. You just got to have GPT plus, which is 20 bucks a month. Nobody expects us to free. They just want to understand it. So let me help J man. So that just means please tell your associations to hire him. He can yes. go, then I can go. Thank you. I, I, I really think Carrie, Joe and I have worked together many times. On, uh, been on the same stages and I think we have a great synergy. So if you want to bring us in together, that's, that's called a bonus, a bonus, a 10 X factor. It's I just say 10 X because I hate the guy who always uses it too much. Got a 10 X. What are you going to do? Just 10 X at all. Like, oh man. Yeah, well, here to 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 comma that and everything we're talking about. My husband and I were just having that conversation around when you go to these big conferences. You go, you get motivated, you spend money, and then you go home, and then you're so overwhelmed you can't work. Yeah, I, I truly believe that if I'm all for going to conferences because man, I went to Zig Ziglar in person and I got motivated. True. Yeah. But no matter where you go, no matter who you work for, you have to be that motivator. And my youngest. The 21 year old um, said, because he's the entrepreneur, you know, J Man, we're just trying to get up to that 300,000 follower level on TikTok because he's got 200,000 on one account, 120 on another. And he said, Mom, I said, Well, so what is it like being an entrepreneur? He said, Yeah, my friends kind of tapped out on me and they literally, he said that it, it is hard work. You have to be the person that gives yourself the work, you have to be the person that gets up. And you have to be, you have to be the closer. And he's not a real estate agent, although he said that's his backup. <laughs> like, okay. That's his fallback. I'm going to work with mama. Right. That's cool. Well, I, and I, I think again, just giving them, I think role playing, if I have extra time right now, and this is one of the things I think we've talked about this in the past, but it's one of the things when I first started was like, okay, tell me all this, give me all the scripts. And, and this goes back to like traditional sales with like, like you're saying, Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Tom Hopkins, Les Brown, all the like, man, Les Brown, I saw him hungry. in person when I was when I was 21 years old. He's like, you gotta be hungry. You gotta be hungry, right? You gotta do the things today that other people won't do because tomorrow you can have what other people won't have. That was one of my favorite quotes that he told me that I was like, that's right, I'm gonna do it. But I think role playing real life with people and just, we're giving you some scripts here, but don't, you may start out like that. Well, Carrie, I understand exactly how you feel. Many of our happiest clients felt the same way. However, what they found out was you may start like that, but then you keep doing it and you keep doing it and then you internalize it. Now it becomes part of your unconsciously competent. Meaning I used to knock on doors and I'm like, give me an objection. Like I'm it's like playing hopscotch. Like, go ahead. I dare you. Got some, got yeah. some. Yeah. I'm like, pew, 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 pew. I'm just going to keep, keep doing it. Not and and a good, it, even when you give everyone the objections, one of the best tips that I ever learned was, and, it, and it's hard because, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm convinced between the two of us, a undiagnosed ADHHHHHD, but <laughs> yeah. listening, like learning how to listen to what the client is telling you, 
because if you listen, you can almost deal with any objection because the moment they tell you they want to be in Florida when they list their home and they want to be in Florida in six months and then they, they won't drop the price or they won't do what the buyers are telling you is wrong with the home, they're not making the changes, you can always go back to what did you tell me in the beginning so I can help you understand why you told me you wanted to move. Because sometimes the, the objection handling is just listening. Yeah, I, that's such a good point. So part of your role play, you, you're going to have scenarios, but I would do some active listening exercises. One of my favorite ones, uh, it's from an improv class I took once, and, and it's last letter. So the way it works is Carrie would say something. she say, oh, how are you doing today? She ended with a Y. I would then formulate my next, what I would say. I would say, I would say yes, today is great. What about Terrific. tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow. Well, you know, I think tomorrow's looking good too because I'm in real estate and it's a, an opportunity for all of us to, to own a home. Oh, I left you with an E. That's bad. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, but it, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun. And you'll realize you could do this with your spouse or do, do this with your colleagues at home. You do it with your spouse. You can realize how much you don't listen to each other, but, uh, you know, it helps you to go listen and then formulate a response, which is so often in sales, sales people are waiting for the person to shut up so they could just say whatever they wanted to say anyways. And they're not listening and they're just, they're not. yeah, they're not listening. And it's I'm good for that. I only. <laughs> All right, so we want them to role play, we want them to active list, actively listen, and I think the other, the really important is the identifying your value, right? Your unique value proposition. Let's let's get into that before we. And this will be a two part series today, folks. So part one is with me here on Facebook, and then part two you'll join us on the IG with Carrie Joe Little. Yeah, like ten o five a.m. Eastern, nine o five. Central. Central and 7.05 a.m. in California. Yeah, they're just getting up, having their cup of coffee. Yeah, so right. unique value proposition. What? Where would you start with that? How would you? Uh, okay, you know, let me, let, me, let me, this is where I'm like. <clears throat> so my unique value proposition when working with buyers, I would definitely want them to understand the value of, you hear Mark making a smoothie? This is my husband. I hope you can't hear it. <clears throat> no, I can't hear it. Good, good. Is helping them understand that you exclusively represent them and going through the process of what that exactly means. Not just filling out the contract or the exclusive agency agreement, but telling them when you are, when we go to look at property, when you go to write the offer, I'm going to show you what's happening in the market and I will have your best interest in mind which brings up another point, because then I would go back to what what's happening in the proposed settlement of what I think could happen is that now, um, and this is, this is why you pay me. This is why you pay me. So I can make sure that your needs are met because you told me this, 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 and this. And then you might have someone that really can't, afford, that they, they just don't have the money for it. And this is where I think you really need to be able to explain your value proposition because you're gonna have buyers that are gonna say, I'm just going to go directly to the listing brokerage and just work directly with the agent. And then you're going to have probably some undisclosed buyers. Yeah. Age representation. It yeah. could be by mistake because people are moving fast. Um, it, it's happened to us once, but then we had to fix it because it was at an open house. Um, and then you're going to have scenarios where, and you, whatever compensation you're thinking of right now, I'm the listing agent and this is my compensation. So think of whatever you think my compensation is. Then you have a buyer that's in, in, and I'm just going to go with whatever my full commission is. You have a buyer that the, now the brokerage is not offering compensation and you have a buyer that just goes directly to me or my listing brokerage. They write an offer. Essentially that buyer could be, and I'm not saying there's agents out here that are doing this. I just, I have so many things in my head, but now you could have a scenario where that buyer could be still paying the full compensation in their mortgage and not even know it. And then now when they ask questions, remember they could have signed um, no agency 
they're not getting represented, where if you explain your value and why they should exclusively work with you, because you're going to go over the data, you're going to go over the numbers, you're going to talk to them about what's available in the community. You're going to talk to them about, you know, oh, you want little Johnny to be on that AAU team. Let me tell you about all of the, everything that's available, what's around in the area. And I'm going to tell you what the owner is not going to tell you when you go to do that inspection, because you now have signed an, a notice of no agency and you're not exclusively represented. So there's right. a few ways you could present that if I was actually presenting to you, but it goes back to active listening, listening, and then sharing your value proposition on why they need representation. It is like if you go to, if you're going to court, you're going to have your own attorney. You're not going to go directly to the attorney that's representing the, the, the person that's suing you. Spill your guts. Yeah, why don't I, you? Um, Hold on, I want to bring this other, where is it? Not that, one second, Carrie, that's you all by yourself. Keep talking. I need makeup. <laughs> Distracted you with with yourself. Uh, <laughs> and so here's, this will be in the show notes for you all. So a couple of different forms that I, not forms, work, let's call them worksheets, right? I think it's good. Are you flexing? Um, I was just showing everybody that says but coffee first. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were flexing on them haters. Um, so I have two forms here. The first one is like a UVP uh, worksheet. And again, in full disclosure, I use GPT to come up with this. I said, I'm, uh, I'm, an, I'm an agent. I want to discover what my unique value proposition is. Can you help me with that? And it kind of starts with, uh, we talked about this for years, the three E's experience, education, and expertise, like, well, what unique skills or expert expertise do you, do you possess? What education, uh, not just, you know, real estate related, but what did you go to school for college, et cetera, what specific experiences? And then it goes client and understanding your approach, market knowledge, communication, negotiation, client success stories, personalization, additional services, professional value and ethic, client relationship and after sales support. So really it's like you just go through and you can kind of answer these questions it will help you um and then the second one can you can you just pause just for a second because i want yeah, everyone uh -huh. to understand that when you a lot of agents are overwhelmed at this point saying that's too much work it'll be the best 20 minutes you spend answering those questions because even if you answer them in evernote or if jman builds this out and makes it a fillable form um, yeah. like you could just jump and dump it into chat GPT. You could come up with a bio. I mean, like there's so many ways you could leverage this. And then when you include your story about the, what it was like when you purchased a home, like you have so many opportunities with just this form and just set a timer and do it. Yeah. And, and I think what you mentioned there, your success stories, I talked about this in a session yesterday, like think back of every buyer that you've ever worked with. Right. And everyone has a different scenario. Maybe it's an investor that wanted to buy that foreclosure. Maybe it's, you know, my retiree who bought that waterfront home. Maybe it's the first time home buyer. So every scenario is a, is a success that you can share with another potential buyer where you demonstrated your value. Right. And I think if you go through this form, like they're, you know, like, like Carrie was saying, the second part of this is it really breaks it down where let's say, Oh, Jay, I didn't do anything before real estate. I was a bartender, right? Oh, that's Just, perfect. You have ex, you are customer service is over the top. Customer service, good with numbers. You can handle stress, right? And and all depends. Like I, I was a bartender at one of the busiest clubs in Rochester where it was like five people deep and you're taking 10 orders at a time and you got to be like this. Like, and then there were people that would, would start there and they couldn't, you know, you order two beers and a mixed drink and they're like, $10 because <laughs> they can't do the math, right? But I think the people skills, the handling the stress, being being good with numbers, that comes into real estate, right? Degree in machining, uh, if you didn't know. You, know. you know, I want to unpack the fact that you were a bartender, but we could have a, that discussion a different day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, and, and my service skills weren't the best because... It was a busy club. I didn't have to be nice. You had to be nice to me. You weren't getting served. So it's different, right? <laughs> it was different. You better like be waving a $20 bill in the air. But um, let's say degree in machining and people are like, I, 
certificate or whatever for tooling and machining, I had to make parts. And this may, I don't know if you know this about me either. I had to make parts that were plus or minus five thousandths of an inch. Very precise, right? Where you could be working on a part for two weeks. And if you go one little extra grind, you just ruined a, something that costs thousands of dollars. So that kind of precision is important. Uh, when so, you, so, so my hidden talent is, is I can sew a wedding dress. Oh, that's so. And so you can, let's, what kind of, um, cause this is good. Cause it's like, what skills did you learn from it? And then, and then the ultimately is like, how does it benefit the client? And, and so and the skills I learned important. was patience. Yep. I learned, um, being precise. Cause if you mess that up, I mean, there are some differences with designing or making a wedding dress and I didn't make wedding dress, but I made probably somewhere between six and eight prom dresses when I was in high school for my friends. But like if some if something That's changed, because so cool. one of my friends um, actually senior year was pregnant. And so I had to customize her dress. So it showed me how to pivot. It showed me how to, you know, remeasure. It showed me how to how to adapt meet deadlines, adapt to change, follow a plan, adapt to change. Um, I mean, it, it also told me I was really good with my hands because I did wood shop in high school as well. That's so cool. Look at it. We've known each other such a long time. We've learned so much here. And, and right. But you, and then you probably already knew I used to edit television for a living. Yeah. Yeah. So, th so. take the time, everybody. These, these forms are going to help you. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention before we're going to head over to, to Instagram is we created uh, an AI chat bot. And it's great how it we just did. got well, we, I mean the collective, you were part of the inspiration, of course. Um, <laughs> but it was great already because, you know, I did, I did the messenger bots before and now with the AI, they crushed the messenger bots because I would have to program all the flows, right? All the conversations. If they say this, then here's a response. If they, the, if this, then that with an AI chat bot, all I have to do similar to a GPT is train it. And you could, and if you're, you're a brokerage or you're an individual agent, train it on your business, train it on your mission statement, vision statement, core values, all the resources, your unique value for all the things you do. Okay. But wait, there's more. I could put that on my website and I could have it available for agents or consumers, anybody, and talk about compensation because one of the things that's in the settlement, it can't go through the MLS. But what it could do is you could have it on your website, on your broker's, on your broker website. So I could go on there and go. And I was thinking that you literally, I mean, like I'm I, it just, you saying that makes me really realize how we're, we're some agents are going to be out because it's going to feel like too much of a process, but I feel like your dot loop, your DocuSign, hello sign, Adobe echo sign, zip forms, whatever we're using broker mint that agents are going to now this is where you, it's going to really make you step up and maybe even having a transaction manager and reaching out to the brokerage. I mean, I, I just, I'm, my brain is on, what is this really going to look like? Are you just going to, because if you can't have it in the multiple listing service, service, can it be a private document that's only available to the agent? And then are you offering compensation? Here's the form, fill it out and, and sign it. Or are we going to have to go negotiate? Will it already be in DocuSign? Like there's so many ways I think this could end up. Well, it's, you could go on this on, on, on the website with a chat bot and then say, it'll, you know, I'm an agent. Okay. You're an agent. Do you have any questions about one, two, three, anywhere street? Yes. What's the compensation here it is. And actually here's all the updates for that property as well. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to Jeremiah's directly. You know, here's his information because that's where a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, they got to contact me. God forbid you need to make another one minute phone call to schedule a showing. <laughs> like show some value here, folks, right? Doing, doing a little bit extra. That's what it's all about. And, and this, and, Cause there are some agents that even, cause even when, if compensation was not what they wanted it to be currently in the multiple listing service, because our MLS made changes where compensation could be nothing to whatever you negotiated. The yeah. agents would call and say, why are you not offering anything? I'm like, talk, tell me more, tell me everything you want to tell me so I can file a code of ethics violation. And I'm a little sarcastic, J-Man. This is where my husband's like, Carrie. I'm like, 
I, and then I'm nice. I'm like, look, I'm just giving you a hard time. You're like, hold but on, say it again. I want to put my recorder on. Go ahead. <laughs> right, sorry. <laughs> we get it a little passionate, right? Yeah. Um, I I just think if if the agents that are all in and come up with systems right now using your um, your uh, responses for dealing with people that don't know how to respond, right? Or, you know, handling the objections, using your GPT. And by the way, if you could send me your link, I'm gonna make a mani chat. I already got it done. I just need your link for the for Instagram. Okay. I just need just put it in Facebook. Um as I lose my train of thought on my own comma. I think the agents that are all in, because this happened in 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, we had a, an exodus, a, a mass exodus of agents that left. Then they came back when real estate looked easy during the pandemic. And now people are freaking out because even our top producers are trying to get creative on how do we get people outside? How do we get people to get off the fence? The agents that set up systems while they're slow, right? Don't open a brokerage while you're slow, like mm -hmm. put in, put everything in place now. So when the floodgates of heaven open, it's already done. <laughs> the floodgates of heaven. Well, and it, uh, Right. When the pandemic hit, some agents were like, ah! and, and then they I were thought I was on a vacation. I, I was, I was like, man, okay. I see opportunity here. And now we've built this, you know, big online virtual presence that for me didn't, I think for both of us was not the way it is now because we saw the opportunity, right? You put us, so you put somebody with ADHD an extrovert and tell us you, we have to, we have to stay home for like video, 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 video. Oh, wait, let me, let me, you said a, a lot, like you, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going live consistently on Instagram every Friday. You started going live on Facebook every Friday. I started creating, you know, we would have joint events. We were doing everything we could do to reinvent ourselves. Yeah. I mean, we were creating classes on how to show houses when you can't like New York, you, we were deemed uh, essential. Yeah, you we know, were non-essential in the like beginning. We were going so. outside getting COVID. Like that's what was happening. We were out here showing houses. We were still relevant. We we just figured out what can we do better. It forced me to grow Instagram. It forced me to use TikTok. It forced me to start being consistent on YouTube. So there will always be a shift. And the agents that are are serious about real estate right now, they'll be okay. Absolutely. See the opportunity. Uh we're, we're coming to time here. If you tuned in, if you, if you learned one thing, I would think you learned more than one thing today. Share it with a friend, like follow Carrie Joe little on all of the platforms. Yeah. At Carrie Joe little. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we'll be live over there. I'm with, I'm with, except for Twitter. Although I do think I own Carrie Joe little on X Twitter, whatever it is, but I am Carrie J, but I, I'm sure I, I gotta go figure out how to, uh, they're, they're not, but nobody happen. cares <laughs> in our industry. Our, if you're an educator, man, if you're yeah. a, a congressman, woman, person, you care. Yeah. I'm J man speaks on all the platforms except for X where it's at J man speaks the number one. <laughs> Cause somebody else took it from me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So thanks for tuning in. My name's Jeremiah J man Monero. This is. Oh, Carrie Joe Little with, you know, I'm a broker owner in Illinois and Florida with Caremark Realty Group, but I am, I'm Smart Girl Media, but just Google Carrie, Carrie Joe Little. Google me, baby. That's a good song too. All right. We'll see you over on the IG. J-Man and Carrie, we out. Wait, should we do some music? Yeah. Uh, 18 Friday. Here it is. Turn up the volume. It's the 18 Friday. Jeremiah's shame at the party started no delay. We hit the dance floor, groove it to the